In this video, I will discuss the simple harmonic oscillation motion graphs, emphasizing the phase difference between them. I will use the simplest example of the position function. A represents the amplitude of the oscillation. Omega is the angular frequency. T is time. This will produce the graph of a cosine. The mass starts its oscillation at one end at amplitude A, then moves towards the equilibrium, which we can choose as our reference zero point, moves past it to negative A, then turns around, returns to equilibrium, goes back to amplitude, and then repeats the cycle. The time between repeated points is known as the period designated by capital T. Velocity is the first time derivative of the position function. It is still sinusoidal, but notice it is offset by 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians. Its amplitude is modified by omega. At the start of the oscillation, the velocity is zero. It goes in the negative direction, increasing speed, until it reaches its maximum value of negative omega a. Then it starts decreasing until it crosses the zero point again. Then it picks up speed in the positive direction until it reaches a maximum value omega a. Then it starts slowing down again until it reaches zero at the start of a new cycle. Acceleration is the time derivative of the velocity function or the second time derivative of the position function. It is sinusoidal with cosine function and the magnitude of the amplitude as omega squared a. The negative sign means that the acceleration function is perfectly out of phase by 180 degrees or pi radians with the position function. At the start of our previous oscillation, we start with maximum negative acceleration with a value of negative omega squared a. Then, as the mass hurtles toward equilibrium, acceleration also decreases to its zero value. Then the acceleration increases now in the positive direction until it reaches its maximum value of omega squared a. Then it decreases again and reaches a value of zero at the equilibrium point. Then it increases in the negative direction until it returns to the beginning of the cycle 
with a value of negative omega squared a. To understand the relationship between the position and acceleration functions, we just need to remind ourselves of Hooke's law. The restoring force is directly proportional to, but opposite in direction of the displacement from equilibrium. Hence, at positive maximum displacement, we will have maximum negative restoring force and hence acceleration. At equilibrium, where the displacement is zero, the restoring force is zero, and so is the acceleration. As the displacement increases in the negative direction, the restoring force increases in the positive direction, and so is the acceleration. To understand the relationship between velocity and acceleration, remember that acceleration is the time derivative of velocity. In graphical form, it means that the slope of the velocity graph is the value of the acceleration. At the start of our oscillation, velocity is zero. Acceleration has maximum negative value. Hence, velocity is increasing in the negative direction. However, as the mass approaches the equilibrium point, the acceleration decreases and hence the slope of the velocity graph flattens out. At equilibrium, acceleration is zero and velocity has a zero slope. Because velocity is in the negative direction, the mass continues past the equilibrium and picks up a restoring force in the positive direction and hence acceleration, which slows the velocity until velocity becomes zero again. At which point we have maximum displacement in the negative direction and mass maximum restoring force and hence acceleration in the positive direction. At this point, the velocity continues to increase in the positive direction, but acceleration starts to decrease until it reaches the equilibrium point at which point the velocity becomes flat again, but having a maximum positive value, after which the acceleration is in the negative direction and our velocity starts to decrease until it returns to zero and start a new cycle. In summary, to interpret the relationship between the position, velocity, and acceleration graphs, keep in mind both the graphical, mathematical, and physical relationships as well.